several times now I've mentioned the WYSIWYG editor. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. Honestly, WYSIWYG editors, even today, really mean what you see is sometimes what you get, but they're actually really helpful. I'm going to change this to full HTML, and this will give us an idea of what's available to us using the WYSIWYG editor. In Drupal, that's CK Editor. It comes with Drupal Core. It's turned on by default. And the nice thing is, it's actually really configurable. Well, let's take a quick peek. Welcome to our site. Go ahead and highlight that. Change that from Normal to Heading 2. And you'll see that Drupal gives us a representation of what that's going to look like. This is all determined by your theme and the cascading style sheets, or CSS, that your theme gives you. If I add a new line of text here, editing Drupal nodes is really fun. Once again, I can highlight that, turn off the italics, and I can create a link out of that text. We'll say HTTP Drupal.org and open it in a new window. You'll note it's represented by blue text and an underline when I hover. Once again, your theme manages the look and feel of those kinds of things. I can also unlink it by highlighting the text and clicking the unlink. To undo a change on a Mac, it's Command Z. On a PC, Control Z does the same thing. I can also quickly add ordered and unordered lists here by clicking the unordered list. It'll give me a little bullet. One, two, three. And I can also add ordered lists. One, two, and three. Block quotes, similarly, quite simple to do. Highlight some text, and click the block quote link. Once again, this formatting is managed by your theme. I can easily insert images as well. I can choose the file, and I've chosen the same file that we uploaded in our first node. This is the Drupal logo, and I can align that or float that to the right, I can even add a caption. When I click Save, it's added to my node inside the body, and if I hover, I can click and drag it to a new position. I can resize my editing window a little bit here as well to drag it anywhere I want. So I'm going to put that back up at the top. So it's nicely aligned. I'm not sure what this is going to look like when we're done, but we'll see. Hovering over the image also allows you to shrink and enlarge your images. But let me remind you to please make sure your images are properly sized and formatted before you add them to your Drupal node. That just helps a lot with people who might not have the bandwidth that you do. I can add a table. I can insert a horizontal line, and I can even show the blocks that I've created in my node. So here's an H2 block, a block quote, a paragraph tag, etc. And of course, if you know HTML, you can view the source and look at what's going on. Once again, I encourage you to explore each of these as we go. Now, we've turned our full HTML on. If I change this to basic HTML, it's going to warn me that there's going to be content potentially lost and permanently deleted. So for instance, if I have inserted a JavaScript or an iframe for a YouTube video or a Google Map or something like that, by changing this to basic HTML, Drupal will strip that out. This is an important reminder that editors should have just what they need and no more and so you can avoid these kinds of problems. I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to lose anything. And that's a quick overview of the CK editor that comes with Drupal. Once again, it's completely customizable, and we'll look at that in the next video. Before you leave, go ahead and click Save. And now we have a very strange looking node.